month, I write a, a blog on the website, www.innerwealthglobal.com. And and listen, I'm a, I'm a creative. So, and what that means is, uh, and I am the creative creative director in in our company. And what that means is, I constantly am inspired to create, and that's kind of my role in the business, is to create content, to teach that content, to develop systems, programs, processes, workshops, things that help move the needle on people's like wealth, success, happiness, freedom, just every aspect of their life. And and that's what I'm like, that's my, my, my mission. And that's my purpose in life. I, I love to see people's resources increase. I love to see people's fulfillment increase. I love to see people's quality of life increase that. And there's nothing that I get greater satisfaction out of than us winning together, than uh, me helping you elevate your quality of life. And in turn, uh, my quality of life is elevated as well. So when we do that through our business, because, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but we live in a world full of currency where currency drives experiences, currency drives options, currency drives opportunities. So if we are not winning together, then one of us is probably not winning as much as we could be. So my goal, my ambition uh, for for this business and going back seven years ago is to create a mechanism to make a positive impact in the world, to share all the inspiration that I have like that's that's inside of me trying to uh, trying to escape, trying to be let out in the world, trying to be birthed in the world. And in turn, we elevate the quality of people's uh, lifestyle and their life, the quality of life that they enjoy. And at the same time, the quality of life that we get to enjoy in, grows as well. And it's a win-win. And we all win together. And, and this is what lights my soul on fire. And I wake up every day really, really excited to impact this world. Now, here's, here's something that I've been like canoodling on and noodling on. It's, it, I, and, and I'll go back to that word that I used, resources. Okay, I love moving the resources in my life and in other people's lives. Now, it goes beyond money. Money is the is what we look at and what we think is our, our resource, but there are so many resources that we call upon on a daily basis. All right. And and, and I want to I want to dive into this. Now, in the inner wealth mastermind, our community of entrepreneurs that are all driving towards more wealth, more success, more happiness, more freedom. In our inner wealth mastermind, I really do feel it is my my duty, my responsibility to make sure that collectively as a group, we are all creating more resources in our life. Now, it's not just about money, even though marketing money is a great marketing tool. So we just, I just launched a new free uh, PDF, free giveaway called Destination Millionaire Mindset. And it's, it's strategical. <laughs> Because money sells. People typically don't buy freedom and happiness, but people buy money. And I've seen that with my own eyes. So so it's a it's a marketing hook, but really what it is is to help you understand the mindset capable of creating anything you want in your life, including a, a powerful, intimate, loving relationship, including more wealth, more success, including more freedom, including more health in your own life. It, it, the 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 creative process that we that we cover in destination millionaire mindset is a creative force to create anything in your life and that is when we talk about resources that's what we're talking about increasing the resources in our life now today i want to talk about oh, over the the weekend and you know over the last couple of days i really unpacked dove deep inside of my inspiration and say what what's in me trying to get out resources like understanding resources is what's trying to get out but what are the resources that we're looking to grow and accumulate in our life and i've come up with seven of them boom on video i'm holding up the number 7 and today in today's episode i I am going to go over these seven resources. Now, the reason I started the, the the podcast off, the episode off with each month I create a blog is because on April 1st, a new blog will be released and published 
on innerwealthglobal.com on the blog site, blog page on the, the, the website, and it will reflect these seven and dive a little deeper. And I'm going to keep like beating these things over and over until we really get some traction. All right. And we really understand there's seven. I'm holding up again, seven figures, seven fingers, seven figures is good too, but I'm holding up seven fingers and we're going to unpack each of the seven vital resources that make life more fulfilling. All right. So jumping into number one, number one is the one that guys, I got to be honest, this is the one I put it number one, because this is the one I've struggled with the most in my life. Now, these, all of these might be in a different order for you but they're all vital resources in your life, all right? So the, this one is the one that I've struggled with most of my life. I can remember going back to a time when I was very, very young, uh, and that is self-love and authenticity. Have you, have you, ever, have you ever had uh, a, a time where you doubted that you could just be the fullest expression of you and still be okay in this world? and still thrive, and still succeed, and still create wealth, and still be loved, and still love. Have you ever have you ever experienced that, where you doubted something about yourself, maybe from a place of shame, or maybe because that one time you did that, that wrong thing, or maybe you grew up in a, in a home that was a perfectionist home, and if you're not perfect, then you're not okay, and there's no sense, there's no such thing as being perfect, so you'll never be okay. If you've ever doubted that you could just fully be the fullest expression of you and succeed and win, you are lacking from self-love and authenticity. And this is the story of my life. I wrote a book in, uh, I think it was 20, 2018, called The Imposter in Charge. And it was all about trying to feel valuable, trying to feel worthy, trying to feel adequate, trying to feel secure, trying to feel significant in a world where everything in my mind and body were telling me that I wasn't okay. And that's the imposter syndrome. Self-love and authenticity in my mind, in my body, in, in my life experience is the most precious resource. Because if you feel like you can't just be you and win and succeed and be worthy of love and, be, and become wealthy just by saying what's on your heart, by being what's in your heart, by, by being the fullest expression of yourself, you'll always feel like you need to shrink and you'll always try to adjust yourself and figure out how to, how to be you and be okay. And over the last seven years, eight years, as I've continued to increase in the amount of self-love and authenticity that I enjoy, the things that aren't good for me fall away and the things that are perfect for me come into place. And as I evolve and as I grow and as I say the things that trigger people and as I, as I speak my truth, some things fall, fall away and other higher level things fall into place. Authenticity and self-love to me, in my mind, in my body, is the greatest treasure that we could possibly interact with and engage in uh, in this lifetime. Now, that might come in direct conflict with what we're taught when we grow up in a religious environment. And I did grow up in a religious environment because resource number two is connection to the divine. And I want to take that a step farther, like connection to the divine, dot, 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 the divinity within. Resource number two is what I grew up. I went to Catholic school for, you know, for many years up to like eighth grade. And it was what I, my memory, my recall of Catholic education was you have to feel really shitty about yourself, but honor God. You have to feel like a broken human being. You have to accept the fact that you're broken and you're an inadequate and insignificant and your life is meaningless. Your life is all about worshiping a God that's outside of you. And over the past eight years, what I've realized is God is within me. And the reason I put self-love and authenticity number one is because when you connect 
to yourself at a deep level, the more you the more you connect to your authenticity, the more you feel valuable in your authentic essence, the more you surrender to the love that you can have for yourself and the, the, the value and the worth that you possess inside, the more you can connect to the divinity within. And when you connect to the divinity within, you'll connect to the divinity where all over, everywhere you look is divinity. But when I was growing up, I was taught that God was outside of me and not in me. And what I realized is I am God too, and so are you. Self-love, authenticity, create a connection with the divine, and the kingdom of heaven is within. And when you surrender to the fact that the kingdom of heaven is within, that's when you can most powerfully connect to the divine everywhere. The divine that's seen and unseen and heard and unheard and known and unknown and in the space and in the mass, the divine is everywhere. And that's number two, connection to the divine and your divinity within. Number three is as we move into uh, a more, I guess, a more physical space, and that's health and energy. When I was 300 pounds and suicidal and drinking at toxic levels and I was abusive to my body and I was abusive to my mind and I was, I was emotionally upside down when I wasn't really nurturing this vehicle that I had been given in the world, when I really didn't take care of myself, I had really had nothing to give and I was depleted and I was operating from a, a source of depletion and from, uh, I, I don't know, sacrifice, physical, mental, emotional sacrifice. Health and energy. When we have health and energy, we can fully live a, a, at our full potential, our, give our full value, create the most significant impact. But without intense health and intense energy, we're always going to give less than our full self. And when it comes to health and energy, there's a couple components. Th number one is your physical well-being relies on your connection with uh, a, a, an acronym called owner oxygen. Water, nutrition, exercise, and rest. D breathe, breathing deeply on a daily basis, multiple times a day. Hydrating, eating awesome nutrition that's perfect for you. Exercising and moving your ass daily and getting plenty of rest and restoring the machine on a daily basis. When you connect to your physical essence, it helps you tap into the, the full power of your, your mental capabilities and your mental capacities because it creates more focus, more clarity. It, it creates more more physical or more emotional security, which moves you into a place of, of emotional connection and allows you to move into emotional connection. But it starts with taking care of your vehicle, oxygen, water, nutrition, exercise, and rest. That's the third resource is health and energy. The fourth resource is love and connection. As we move into the, the, the emotional connection of number three, we get to move into love and connection and utilize that emotional connection to deepen our most intimate, our most cherished, our most valuable resources or uh, connections and relationships. When we deepen our most intimate relationships, we move from the superficial world of the weather's nice outside, um, what sports teams won, to a place of of. Sharing goals, sharing dreams, sharing visions, but also jumping into a place of emotional intimacy is what are you scared of? What, what scares you the most? What are you, what, what keeps you up at night? What, what's your, how, how are you, how are you hurting yourself like mentally and emotionally? And it allows us to dive into a deeper, more spiritual connection with each other to create a lasting bond. Now, I'll tell you this, this comes easily for me, this loving connection. Now it does, but before, you know, but when I was neglecting my body and when I was out of alignment, this, this was difficult for me. But what, what happened in my life is I overcompensated and I went from not being loving and connected with people to being overly loving and connected with people. And since I pegged the other way, I tried, I thought I needed a deeply intimate, loving, connected relationship with everybody including clients, including prospects. It's almost like I felt that I needed to, to be in an emotional, freaking intimate state with every single person I came in contact. And what it did is it depleted me. And 
I've got a few people in my life that I get deeply, deeply mentally and emotionally intimate with. And there's other people that I serve. And there's other people that, that I interact with. But when you have the opportunity and when you have the desire to connect at a deeply intimate relationship, it, it causes love and connection that we all crave and we all cherish. The number, the number five vital resource is impact and significance. Listen, there was a time I woke up every day to go to work. I woke up every day to go to work to, to, to run an organization so that I could put money into my bank account. It was a self-centered uh, interaction, engagement that I had with my corporate responsibility. The only reason I went there is for my own self-serving needs. I didn't go to work to make a difference at work. I went to work, made a difference at work so that money kept being deposited into my bank account. It was very selfish. It wasn't, it wasn't from a place of service. It wasn't from a place of, of fulfillment. It wasn't from a place of joy. It was literally a place of security. I just went to work to serve my own purposes and my own needs. I didn't go to make a positive difference in the organization because I wanted to make a positive difference. I made a positive difference in the organization because that's the way that money would continue to come into my bank account. Because when I stopped making a positive in difference in the world, in, in, in my organizations, then I got fired twice in about 20 months after a long run in corporate. But that long run was fueled by selfishness and self-centeredness and self-obsession. It was all about me, and that's why it all fell apart. When, when we connect with the number five resource, impact and significance, we find the gifts and talents that we have inside of us. We start to share them with the world. We start to make an impact in the lives of people in our true, authentic, natural, zone of genius ways. And when we make an impact in the lives of people, and as people's lives improve because of our talents and our gifts and our natural abilities, then they start to recognize the genius that we have, the talent that we have, the gifts that we have, and the impact that we've created. And that's when our significance level increases. And every human being wants to feel significant in some way, shape, or form. And that level of significance comes from being selfless in serving through your own natural talents, gifts, in your zone of genius. And everyone has these elements. Everyone has a zone of genius. If you think you don't, go back to number one with the self-love because you do possess a zone of genius just like everyone else. You do possess talents just like everyone else. And if you think you don't, go back to number one and start there, self-love and authenticity. You'll find your natural gifts and talents. But when we give those natural gifts and talents away and we make a positive difference in the world, not only does our self-esteem go up, but so does the significance that we hold in the world and how people view us and how people handle us and cherish us and how they admire us. And that's not what we're after, but we do crave to make a difference and we do crave some sense of significance in this world. Number six resource, the sixth vital resource is wealth and freedom. Listen, I love money and money loves me. My wife and I and, and our kids are very well off financially. And without being very well, well off financially, I don't know if I'd be able to, uh, to impact as many people as I do. I don't know if I'd be able to spread as, uh, the message as, as much as I do. I, with that the wealth that I've accumulated and created and the income and, and the, the net worth that I've created, it also gives me time freedom. And with that time freedom, I'm able to create content. I'm able to, to travel and speak to, to organizations. I'm able to, to write books. I'm able to write blogs. I'm able to record this podcast episode. With the time freedom that I'm allotted, I'm able to do my, my social media engagement and make a difference in the world and be part of people's lives that when they wake up, they read my message and, and it lights a spark and it inspires them. And I get these messages all the time where the content that I create lights a spark and, and provides and creates some inspiration in people's lives. And without wealth, none of that happens. Without wealth, 
There's no time freedom because financial freedom gives you the ability to buy back your time and to buy your time. And this is where destination millionaire mindset comes in because everybody, most people that I encounter think that money's going to solve all their problems. But the reason that you're broke is likely in one of those top five resources. Either you're, you lack self, self love and authenticity. You don't know what you're really good at. You don't, you don't understand that you are a divine being that's been given divine gifts and talents. Maybe your energy is depleted, so you don't feel inspired to share yourself with the world. Maybe you don't feel like loving of yourself and others and connected to, to, to people. and You don't feel like va you're valuable. You don't feel loved, and you, you don't know how to love. So, so you don't understand the, the, the value of giving something of yourself to the world. And maybe you're, you're, you're just like I, I used to be, where it was all about you, and you didn't approach life to impact and create some significance in the world. But when you do all those five things above wealth and freedom, you, you create wealth in your life. And when you create wealth, it, it'll help you buy back your time so that it opens up new opportunities for experience and creation and, and, and options and opportunities and possibilities and new potentials. And, and it sure is a whole lot easier this the living this human life with, with, with money. It sure is a lot easier to have some financial wherewithal than it is to be broke and always worried about your income, always worried about paying your bills. I want everybody to experience not having to worry about paying your bills. Money can't buy happiness, but money sure solves a lot of problems that require money. And team, the last the last vital resource, the last of the seven vital resources is peace and fulfillment. Now, the reason that we want the, the self-love and the authenticity, the reason that we want the connection to the divine, the connection to the divine within, the reason we want the health and energy, the love and connection, the impact and significance, the wealth and the freedom is so that we can experience peace and radical fulfillment in this world. And this one is not last, but this one is a whole lot easier to come by when those top six resources are, are abundant in your life. Peace and, and fulfillment comes when you know you're making a difference, where you know you're valuable, where you know your, your financial security is, is, is not in jeopardy, when you know that you're loved, when you know how to love. When your, your body feels vital, your body feels dynamic, your life feels like you matter, you feel significant, You're, you move the needle. When you know you can wake up and be yourself and win, it's a lot easier to feel a sense of peace and fulfillment in this world. Guys, these are, I'm not saying this is it. I'm saying this is what I come up with. When I reflect in contemplation, when I go on my runs and, and when I meditate and when I journal and when I just sit with my eyes closed in silence and stillness and I reflect on, on my life, like the inspiration and the spark and the divinity within starts to create the, like this, this content and this knowing and this wisdom inside of me that, that it's like it, it feel, I feel pressured to share in the world. And these seven are the seven vital resources that I've felt the, the most pressure to share. Maybe, maybe you, your order of priority is different, but I would encourage you to take inventory of life in your life where you're lacking self-love and authenticity, where you're lacking connection to the divine and your div divine essence within, where you're lacking health and energy where you're lacking love and connection with, with a couple, a few, it doesn't have to be a lot human beings that allow you to be you and allow you to grow in the fullest essence of you without guilt and shame, without attack, without threats, without blame, and just hold safe space for you, loving, safe, intimate space. Where you're lacking in impact, in, and maybe you're just trying to get for yourself without making a difference in the world, where are you lacking in impact? Impact, if you lack in impact, then you lack in significance. Where are you lacking in wealth and freedom? And do you really, truly feel a sense of peace and fulfillment in this world? These are my seven vital resources.
I'd love to hear from you if these connect. And I'd love to hear if there's anything different, if there's, if there's a different expression of these. I'd love to hear from you if there's something I'm missing. Because I, I don't think I have it all figured out. I just share what's on my heart and soul. And this week, these seven vital resources are what was there. I hope these helped. I hope these served. And I hope these make a true meaningful difference in your life.